Hey everybody, it's Mike with Monkey Fab. So ever since the, uh, sorry about the goats and the sheep, they're loud today, they're being extra annoying. But ever since uh, the Vulcan 205 has come out, everybody's been hitting me up with, uh, hey Mike, do a review on the uh, new Vulcan 205. And what's the deal? The 205, I had it, I bought it. November of 2018 and I just sold it so it's been working for you know uh, a couple years no issues and was working fine when I sold it and I love that welder and recommended it to everybody I thought it was a great value so why wouldn't the 205 be the exact same thing so it's the same price and you pay an extra I think it's like 120 150 bucks and you get an additional two-year warranty for three years so for you know, eleven fifty or whatever it is, plus taxes, wherever you're at, you got a machine that's gonna last for three years, uh, or you just take it in and exchange it. Isn't that the beauty of it? The warranty. Uh, there's other welders in this price range, but you're gonna deal with shipping and all that good stuff. This guy, you're just gonna take it to your local Harbor Freight and swap it out. Get. The warranty pay the extra for the two years and then you got a three-year guaranteed running machine or your money back and i haven't had any trouble with harbor freight and their warranty program uh, so today we're going to go ahead and unbox it show you all the pieces parts and pieces uh, we're going to weld on some stainless steel and some aluminum possibly some titanium i got a friend dropping by bringing some titanium and uh we'll let you know how it runs Spoiler alert, it's probably going to run just as good as the 205, if not better. Okay, so all the usual suspects for the parts that come with the Vulcan, all of this is exactly identical to the ProTeg 200, so the, the previous machine. Even the, the, the box, the boxing and the casing and everything, it looks exactly the same. Uh, the readout looks to be a little bit different uh, but I'm not hundred percent sure on that so yeah this is different but the rest of this uh, what we got is a regulator which I'm just gonna leave in this box I don't like these uh, dual head type regulators I like the little ball bearing floaty guy I already have that set up so we're just going to use that as opposed to unpackaging something that I'm not gonna use and don't like then there is the stinger which is what you'll use for stick welding, which I don't do, so we're gonna leave that in the box as well. Um, we got a nice foot pedal. It's got the nice little catch on the end of it, which I like, it just helps you kind of move this guy around under your welding table or whatever you're standing with. It's got a pretty good feel to these guys. Um, no complaints the last time, so I don't suspect any complaints this time. Uh, we have our power cable situation. Uh, one is, it's your, three prong 220 then this guy okay so this guy is a three prong uh, 120 110 whatever the hell it is I, I thought they would plug into each other but they don't They actually both plug into the machine so you just swap the cable out if you're gonna run uh, 110 or 220 quick note on power your welders only as good as the power you put into it so if you're welding off some shitty household 10 15 amp breaker uh, with 110 your welding your weld uh, is going to be limited to very low amps and uh, you might have problems with consistency uh, your arc stuff like that always even if you're going to use it on the 110 now i think the 110 setting it says is good for 130 amps for the 110 single phase and it's good for 205 amps on the 220 uh, but again, both of those need to be powered correctly. Uh, it, 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 and I would say like probably at least a 20 amp uh, breaker uh, on if you're gonna try the 110. I have 220 everywhere with big fat 50 amp breakers. And even my 110 is plumbed with 30 amp breakers and the supporting wire to carry that. Uh, it, but how you feed your machine just as important as the gas is the, which is gonna be 100% argon only on a TIG welder, not not mix like your MIG welder. Uh, and it's just as important as the air you feed it or the gas you feed it is the power you feed it. So uh, grounding strap, nothing uh, just completely typical of these welders. 
you got a gas line which hooks up the regulator into the back of the machine and you got a torch it is an air cooled uh, number 17 torch uh, just plugs in with the DENS connector with the typical uh, torch pieces for the large set just standard collets it looks like you got maybe 1 16th, uh, 3 32nds, and 1 8th, and then three different cups from size maybe 5 to 8, and a couple different backs. So nice, everything you need to get up and get started. No complaints there. Let's uh, get this guy hooked up and we'll roll through uh, what we have available with the machine. Okay, in the shop, getting ready to assemble this. This is how you put this together. It is pretty easy. Uh, we'll start in the back and work our way to the front. So the uh, power cable is just one of these dillies right here. And it just plugs into the back. So it plugs right into here. There's one with a funny little tab on it. I think it twists just a little bit, something like that. Anyway, easy enough. Uh, gas line here. No Teflon tape, boys and girls. These are meant to seal on themselves. Through modern engineering, it's a miracle. So this guy just goes into here and uh, twists it in. No big deal, right hand feed. They usually make these guys standard. Yeah, don't overdo it, just give it a little snug. You don't need to gorilla torque these guys, just like maybe, maybe like six, eight foot pounds. Don't kill it. It is a 11 sixteenths. And then on the other end, we'll put our flow meter. This is just a single ball bearing type flow meter. It just has a little ball bearing that kind of rolls up and tells you uh, this is in liters per minute, which is different than uh, cubic feet per minute, so you got to know what you're doing. This is like a cheap uh, Chinese version um, I probably bought off of eBay just you just have to realize that there's a difference. I think the LPM is much more than the CFM CFH and LPM it's, it's kind of like half basically so I don't really worry about the numbers I just turn the gas coverage to where I need it so turn it up and then turn it down until you have problems and turn it back up a little bit and that's how you set the gas regulator then you know you're good so this guy uh, bolts into this meal same theory you don't have to kill it you just want to snug it down a little bit too small that's what she said still too small hey what do you know it's the same exact one Imagine that, Mike. Okay, so everything on the back is hooked up now. Minus, minus plugging it in. We go to the front. And there are uh, three plugs across the bottom right here. You'll see them. Uh, one is your foot pedal, and the other is either your ground or your electrode depending on what you're doing so we weld in uh, DCE in which is uh, direct current electrode negative so what that means is our ground strap on TIG welding is going to go to the positive side and our torch is going to go to the negative side and there's even a little picture there that shows you just in case you forgot if you're stick welding I guess you do it the other way I don't stick weld so I don't know but if you do hook it up backwards, you'll know right away because you'll push down the pedal and your tungsten will just turn into a hot mess and probably drip off the end onto whatever you're trying to weld. So just keep that in mind. Uh, negative goes to ground, goes to positive. Torch goes to negative. There's little pictures there that tell you everything. They miraculously give you all of the answers. So uh, I was trying to be prepared to make this video as fast as possible because I know you guys are like, Mike, you're too long-winded. You talk too much. Just give me three seconds and I'll be able to figure out whatever I need to. Um, so I was trying to preset everything and make it go quickly. I'm trying to make this video fast. Can we do it in under 10 minutes? 
I sure hope so. So the pedal, they give you this, this crazy like, like uh, 20 foot pe uh, pedal, which is a bit overkill because I think your leads are only like uh, 12 feet. So, but you got plenty of pedals. So if you want to upgrade your leads to longer ones, then that's an option. And then you can weld across your shop with this massively long pedal. The torch. So let's assemble the torch real quick. We're going to be doing aluminium first. So for aluminium, I like the number five standard colt. So that is second. So we'll even use the tungsten they sent us, which is gray. I'm not sure what gray is. So, and it doesn't say. Maybe it says in the instruction somewhere. Usually what I use is 2% laminate and I just have a stack of it over here. But uh, why not give what they got a shot? We'll uh, throw it on and uh, a back cap. So here is how this guy bolts together. Let me go sharpen the tungsten. I'll be right back. Hold that thought. All right, we're back with the semi-sharpened tungsten. Um, just give it like a, are you gonna focus? So I just kind of give it a, kind of like a blunt point, just taper it a little bit. What we're gonna do is go ahead and ball it when we go to do the aluminum. So the collet just goes on the back. That goes through the back, like meow. The collet goes on the front. It screws in all the way down. Your cup screws onto the collet. And then your back cap goes on the back. It has an O-ring on it that seals uh, all of the atmospheres out so that it is only letting argon blow through there. That's pretty good. So that is how we set up the torch. torch picture. Now, these lugs, same thing. Now, these are even more sensitive than the gas fittings. These little, they're usually made out of brass or copper. And if you over uh, torque these guys, it'll just basically shear this guy forward and then you don't, it won't, it won't stay tight. So what you want to do is turn it counterclockwise or turn reverse one and then kind of uh oh uh oh there you go just kind of work it in there and just hardly any any resistance will work it just needs to kind of feel a little bit snug you don't want to even go five foot pounds you just want to snug it a little bit and that will ensure that you got good number one is like it's all brass in there anyway so you're going to get good electrode pixies flowing anyway uh, so don't kill it and then lastly we got our ground strap and again it just goes on the positive side of the machine how many times does that positive and negative mess people up because you say oh it's a ground it's got to go on the negative right not today junior okay and then we'll just plug this guy in, in the air guy into our tank. Again, no, no, no bullshit, no Teflon tape, none of that shit. Just screws right in. We use a, we use a big crescent wrench, throw it on there. I can't see what I'm doing. Good Lord. Use a big crescent wrench, just throw it on there and just kind of give it a couple pats. And we crack it. There we go. There we go. And when you open these guys, there's a rubber ring inside that's sealed. So you don't have to, again, you don't have to kill it. You just want to back it up until you feel it kind of hit that little rubber bump stop, kind of like a faucet. And the same thing when you shut it off, just hit the rubber bump stop. Good, and that'll keep uh, that'll keep all these tanks in nice shape for everybody who rents them or uses them. Okay, so machines here. 
I've never messed with this before and uh, we'll just figure it out as we go. So on the back somewhere there's a switch usually. There is a reset button, okay. Where is the on off switch? Am I missing it? Is it on the front? Parameters, process, oh yes, it's right here. Look, the button's there. Usually they're in the back on rollers, I don't know. Bucking, bucking the system. So, pretty normal. Huh, the fan turned on and then turned off. I wonder if it has fan on demand. Either that or the fan's broken, it's kind of neat. <laughs> so, uh, usually these guys will go, let's see, VRD, I don't know what that stands for. Uh, DC TIG, so I'm assuming that here we're at uh, DC TIG, it already knows that we're on the 240 uh, volt uh, thing and this just changes the amps, so good. I don't know what this means, like unless that just tells me that's the icon for amps, but we got 205 and we go all the way down to 10 amps, which is pretty nice. Uh, let's see what we got here. So this is our AC TIG, okay. So that's interesting, it just must have like a default setting. So let's hit this, what do we got? Uh, VRD, I don't know, what are you? Three seconds. Is that my post flow? Maybe that's S. I don't know what S stands for. Hertz, okay. So that's our, our Hertz is our frequency. So I usually set that like 120. Our percent is going to be uh, our AC balance. I usually set it at 70. Some of these machines are backwards. So 30 would be 70, but we'll just have to figure it out. Um, 3S, oh, post, okay, so it's giving me the names here. Pulse on, off, okay. So we can go on with the pulse or off. If I do on, what does that do? Background amps, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, peak, okay. Peak, frequency, okay, that's how many uh, pulses per second. I like the fact that it gives you uh, a little like doohickey here that shows you what they're talking about. Peak time, frequency, and then we're just off. So if I take off the post, or not the post flow, the Pulse, we'll turn that off because I don't use pulses on AC welding, <laughs> but you can. So that's kind of a neat uh, function that you got here. Um, our amperage, we usually weld out 175-ish. Uh, so our pre-flow, we turn that off because you don't want any pre-flow on aluminum. So that's about as low as we get. Our frequency, we know that our uh, balance our post flow for aluminum we usually set at like like six seconds it really doesn't take much post flow um, our pulse is off in our amperage so that's all easy real intuitive and uh, what do we got here DC so uh, this is our our TIG well like our just rate what we use for still just direct uh, so again, we've got pre-flow. We just usually leave that as low as possible. The post-flow on stills, I'll usually set like 10, 12 seconds, depending on what I'm doing and how thick it is. Um, 12 won't hurt. The cool thing about this is it has the adjustability. The last machine only had, um, it was like a preset, I think like 10 seconds. So if you were welding aluminum and you only needed, you know, five, six seconds, you were wasting, you know, like double uh, what you would normally do. So uh, that was a big gripe on the first machine. Another, so uh, again, we got like 10 to 205. Uh, our pre-flow, we don't really care about that. The post-flow, the pulse is on, so our off, we can turn that on. And, uh, Let's see, our background amps is 25%, which means that it's half, well, it's, it's a quarter of whatever the peak amps is. Uh, our peak amps, um, we could set that, I guess, only as high as 70 and as low as 30. I wonder if that changes when you change the background amps. 
um, interesting. And then our frequency, we can go all the way up to 50 and down to like a tenth uh, of a second, which is kind of kind of kind of neat. Uh, generally, people will set this at like uh, two, <laughs> like like um, like one like one pulse per second, one point two pulses per second. Uh, if you're just bump bump bump, you want to go along with your with your pulsing. Everything you want to do, you can do on just straight. Uh, DC or AC welding for welding aluminum and uh, stills, uh, titaniums, magnesiums, uh, everything you need to do is perfectly fine with that. You don't have to mess with those. You can just uh, know your machine has that pulses and forget about it. It's completely up to you and what you want to do. But um, I'm just going to set that for off right now. And we'll do a quick weld uh, with a pulse just to show you guys what it's like. Uh, but I, I don't generally don't mess with it. So we got the so we got DC. We did the AC. What what else? Oh, this is the process button. You're messing up, Mike. So the DC stick. Don't know what to do with that. I think you just stick in some 6010 and slap it on 150 and go. I don't know. I've never stick welded before. Uh, okay, so our AC is set up and our DC is set up, and that's good. And the fan is not running constantly, which is really nice. Uh, I wonder if I crack this guy if it turns on. Let's see. It does, look at that. And we just checked our flow, and it's doing well. Although, it's, oh, okay, that's why. So cool. I like that fan on demand deal. And I like this, this layout. It's pretty simple and intuitive. Uh, a lot of features for a machine that's only a thousand dollars. Get the warranty. And you know, if you can't learn to TIG weld uh, and make your money back that thousand bucks in uh, you know three years, then you're probably just not trying, is what I would guess. I have a whole uh, video playlist. So if you're not familiar with playlists, if you go to my YouTube channel down there, uh, Monkey Fab Garage, and then click on the playlists, which are at the top, there's a playlist called How to TIG Weld, uh, something to that effect. There's 13 videos in there, and it talks you through everything you need to know to TIG Weld. I realize I'm long-winded, I apologize, but if you sat down in class to learn how to TIG weld in a professional uh, classroom setting, it's going to take a lot longer than to watch 13 videos. I guarantee you that much. However, uh, it, it does require practice. You got to learn eye hand coordination and you got to learn heat control to TIG weld reasonably well. And that comes with hood time, is how it works. So I'm getting long winded good machine let's weld some aluminum and see how it goes all right here is the evolution it's still hot of of the aluminum so you know we started out fiddling around uh, I actually balled the tungsten and I forgot to change the balance back to uh, it, as low as the balance goes is 50, which will ball the tungsten because it gets the tungsten super hot, uh, but doesn't weld real well at 50 <laughs> AC balance. So then I bumped the balance back to uh, 70 and messed around with the gas flow. And I was just having issues. Uh, it was having issues initiating the arc. And uh, it was also having issues uh, just putting down a nice looking bead. So. Uh, I swapped out the tungsten, the one that they gave me for some regular uh, lanthanated 2%. I sell this on my website uh, and it's pretty cheap for a 10 pack. And then we got what we got over here, which is a little bit better and uh, just played around. Oh, and another thing I did was, so I had it just ground clamped to my table over here and you'll see this thing's covered in mill scale. Usually if I clamp it onto a piece of copper onto the mill scale, it does okay, 
uh, but it wasn't. And you'll see I have a pretty, uh, what I do is I have this copper lug on nice clean metal with some copper wire and I just move my ground over. This is what I usually use for my ground for my HTP. I moved it over here and that cleaned up my arc start, no, no problem. And then by the time I got the gas and the balance right, I think we're at, well, I'll show you what we're at. So we're at 175, but I'm pedaling that. I'm sorry about the fan, but I don't want to turn the machine off when it's still hot. Uh, 80 hertz and 67 uh, AC balance is where I played between uh, 67 the low and up to 75 and 75 was just not really giving me the etching that I wanted. If you'll look, you'll see that there's no uh, real good etching, uh, what they call a cleaning action over here. Whereas this has got nice, you know, equal balance. The beads nice and shiny. So uh, that was dropping it down to what that 67, 68 ish. And this is, I just peeled the vinyl off of this guy and wiped it down with alcohol. I didn't do any brushing or anything, but it's pretty clean aluminum to begin with. Uh, so that's how we dial in the machine. We just kind of work with each of the settings individually until we get the, you know, a nice looking bead profile, good gas coverage, good etching uh, on both sides. And there we go. So pretty happy with that. Let's uh, try to weld something. Uh, maybe we'll just butt weld a couple pieces together. Maybe this piece. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. All right, what we got here is just some aluminum uh, coupons that I stomped out on the shear and uh, we'll just make like a little box thing, right? Some worthless little box thing. round thingy. I can't do flat thingies apparently.
All right, so aluminum welding. Um, had to fiddle with the machine, kind of you know figure out what was going on. It was a little bit of uh, problems grounding. Like I showed you, I just kind of put it up to my good ground spot, and that cleaned that up. I fiddled constantly with the Hertz and the AC balance and the airflow, and I would say most of that is, uh, you know, here, here's the here is the result. You know, we got round tube. And we got just some uh, outside uh, corner joints and a fillet weld and a butt weld and it looks not so good I'm gonna I'm gonna take responsibility for that and say that is my fault because I it's probably been a year or so since I've welded aluminum yo Hector oh, okay let me grab the uh, gate for you so it is, I'm gonna say that's my fault, not the machine's fault. Uh, if I sat around and did this for a few hours instead of just five minutes once a year, then it'd probably get a nicer, better consistency look. That's all input stuff. That's not, uh, that's not the machine. The machine's pretty good with aluminum. Uh, the arc is, doesn't seem to want to go exactly where I point it, but again, I don't know if that's me. Uh, just not spending enough time on the aluminum or if that's a steel. We're going to do stills next, and I'm that's all I do. So I'll know what's going on exactly with the stills. But uh, can you stick aluminum together? Uh, yes. Yes, you can. So not bad. Not, not wonderful. But uh, definitely stuck together. All right, so I got these stainless steel uh, just dropped from these exhaust ring things that I make. And we're gonna just do some beads, just straight beads on the stainless steel. Uh, all I've done is I've switched over to a number eight uh, collet, which came with this kit, and uh, turned the flow up to like 15 liters per minute, which is equal roughly to 30. Now, these things don't always flow 100% accurate. Uh, and that's why I said before that I just mess with the gas till I find the right spot. It doesn't, picking numbers doesn't always equal being what you want unless you understand that particular gauge and how it works. So it's at 15 right now, we got a number eight and we're just gonna run a bead of stainless and see how it does. This will be our first uh, DC electrode negative welding that we've done. go see it's all kind of gray looking uh, which is kind of typical for these colts so what we'll do is try to turn the gas up and uh, see if it welds a little uh, makes a little nicer looking weld okay so now we've got it up to like 25 this is like says max it's pretty much maxed out you gotta put the welding helmet on, or else it's gonna make it difficult.
so pretty much the same thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap this guy out, this guy, because this works pretty good for aluminum and uh, maybe still. I don't even like it for still, to be quite honest with you. Um, I like it for aluminum and aluminum only. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the parts out, all the standard coolant, the coolant body. We're gonna pull this uh, insulator off and what we're going to do is replace it with the stubby gas lens and uh, my GLS Fab number 16 cup. And we sell all of this at monkeyfabgarage.com. That's monkeyfabgarage.com. Uh, if you want to give it an upgrade, you can get the cups. I think the number, six, uh, number 16 is like 25 bucks. With the uh, stubby gas lens, I think it is like 20, I think it's 55 bucks, something like that. Don't quote me, just go to the website and find out. You see, I just dropped it and it's still good. But yeah, this is GLS Fab number 16. You can pick them up at uh, monkeyfabgarage.com. And what that's going to do. just give us a lot more gas coverage see that and I've had this guy for probably a year year and a half now uh, they're pretty robust and let's see what that does to our stainless steel welding with the GLS Fab Cup and this is with the standard Colet body. So you figure out which ones you want to use. I'm going to use the GLS Fab Cup from now on. Let's try it with uh, aluminum tube and see how that, or not aluminum tube, let's try it with uh, stainless steel tube and see how that does. This, if you have this thing sitting by your work area and you're doing something sensitive like stainless and titanium, uh, this guy can create quite a draft. You see that the air is just pouring out of this guy when the fan's running and I can feel it all down on my feet just dancing around. It's not, here is fine because I'm welding over here, obviously, and it doesn't seem to mess with it. But if you're, you gotta keep that in mind when you're welding, do I have some kind of draft or something going on through here that's gonna be messing up my uh, airflow, my gas coverage. So let's uh, go ahead and put a bead on this guy right here. Always a trick to welding a uh, tube is just don't get uncomfortable. Well, Uh, 
stainless. Done. It's got the nice penetration on. Uh, typically when I'll do this, is it focusing on me or the... Well, it's never looked good on videotape. I suck. So one thing I noticed was that when... See that weird spot right there? I crank the post flow way up because I'd rather have nice looking welds than uh, gray looking welds and I got this nice cup so turn the flow up to about usually like 30 CFH which is about uh, like 15, 20 ish uh, on this guy, the LPH. Um, and then I turn the post flow up to about uh, 15 seconds or whatever. What I noticed was a lot of times what I'll do when I'm welding on my normal welder is I'll post flow it for like a few seconds until we're sure the weld has solidified and then I'll just drop my tungsten down on top of it and just kind of let it rest there. What that does is I can, I can it keeps the thing shielded when I can turn around with my other hand and start you know fixing whatever I need to start the next series of welds or whatever. But when I put the tungsten down on this guy, something in the machine sensed like, oh, there's we're done or there's a short, and it just cut the post flow off early. So I got a couple, a little funky kind of weld looking spots here and there because of that. So uh, if you want to keep post flowing it, I would suggest probably, you know, check that out, see if that's happening uh, to you. But, you know, anyway, that is the new Vulcan 205 Pro Tig from Harbor Freight for just a thousand bucks. And in three years, if you have a problem, you just take this back to the store where you bought it from and you get a new one off the shelf and you can extend the warranty from there. I think usually, correct me if I'm wrong, but for like another uh, a few bucks, you can extend it out again. <laughs> That's, you, you can indefinitely have a welder for 12, 1300 bucks with your taxes out the door. That's amazing. Uh, I like all of it. I like the intuitive layout. I like the fact that it gives you everything you need. The foot pedal's nice. The hoses are nice. The uh, leads are nice. The intuitive, like digital, it just kind of makes everything make sense there. I would, you know, get you a nice uh, stubby gas lens. You can get that at monkeyfabgarage.com. And I would, I'm, I would swap this guy out with uh, a Proflex. Uh, they're like a hundred bucks from HTP uh, welds. I think it's called USA welds uh, here in the States. And uh, yeah, amazing machine. Highly recommend that. If this will be when people contact me and they say, Mike, uh, I need a welding machine. I'm going to say, well, for what and what's your budget? Because that's important. If it's, you know, it has to run every day, eight hours a day in our shop, then I'm not going to recommend this guy. Uh, but if you're, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people that contact me say like, Mike, it's just, you know, hobby welding. I want to build hot rods in my garage. Uh, this is perfect. This is perfect. So uh, big fan of this guy would, would definitely purchase again. And uh, if you guys do it with confidence, get the warranty, can't go wrong. And uh, until next time, this is Mike with Monkey Fab. Be sure to go check out my other videos. I got a whole series, like I said, on a playlist of how to TIG weld. Uh, there's videos on gas coverage for aluminum. There's videos on just demos, uh, welding, uh, different things that I sell. And all that is there to help you guys because uh, I've been given a lot from running my store and I hope to give you guys, uh, give a little bit back to you guys by making these type of videos. So until next time, this is Mike with Monkey Fab signing out.